very good morning to you. This is Tony and Pemba, Optimizing People, Teams, Leadership, Culture. And we're going to be talking to you about selling and promoting to different kinds of customers. Come a little closer, Pemba. You're too Thank far you. away from me. Thank you. Morning, how's it going? I'm good, man, and you? I'm good. Let's go. Three, two, one. <coughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so I think this is just a follow-up concerning the session we, we actually had yesterday with one of our biggest clients. Uh, and we learned a lot of things that we thought, you know what, today let's just do something around that. Sure. Because we had a, we had a room of about, I think about seven people. Yeah. Seven people coming from different departments. And it was, it was a nice one because now you, you, you get to understand that they all have different needs. And even if you have a pitch, then you need to modify your pitch to actually get it to talk to all of them. What has been experienced yesterday on the session that we had? I thought it was quite interesting because we had procurement, mm. we had training, we had technical guy, new business technical guy, mm. uh, we had CSI, um, we had the... Transformation. Transformation, and yeah. we had the ESD development. So exactly. they all come with different hats, different expectations, different points of view that they want to discover. So it was, it was quite a complex process to be presenting to the points of each of them. Because remember, we asked them the question, what's important for you in your business? What are your biggest challenges? Yeah. And what are your goals? Yeah. And we've got such a diverse range of what their focus points are and what their goals are. So how did you handle when you were presenting? What was going through your mind when you were presenting there? Okay, I think for me, uh, you, need to be, you need to be able to adapt, right? And the, the, the most important thing is, remember, the key, guys, here is that you need to sell to, to the client what they want, not what you think you want. So the first thing which was, which, which was good that we, that we did is to actually ask them the question, what are, your, what, what are your top three challenges? So each one of them actually gave their challenges and pain. So the way I tailored my presentation it was to suit each one of them, to speak to to speak to their needs because if i just talk to them uh, on on a, on a standard <coughs> presentation or on a standard pitch <coughs> it means what i'm saying is one size fits all sure and it's not like that no. <laughs> so you'd find that in the room i would be speaking to just one person then i'm i'm, I'm neg neglecting the six other people so the way i've done it and the way we've done it yesterday was that we first asked them the question what's your top three biggest problems and they gave that to us so the first thing that you do when you sell to different clients is to always understand what their problem is. Yeah. Because you don't want to get to someone and sell them something which they don't want or it has nothing to do with them. Imagine talking to the transformation person about CSI matters, selling community development, all these kind of things, being in the 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 public, all these kind of things. That's not the right person to be talking to about that. So you need to know exactly what this person need, what their pain is, what their problem is, and give them a solution. You know what I discovered, and I'm aware of it, but I forgot it. We're in any meeting with a, with a large organization, you have a limited time. Yeah. And the problem is we gave that guy that was on the broadcast, we asked him for his problem, and he gave us 10 or 12 minutes of problem. Yeah. Which, doing with the seven people, we ran out of time. And so if you are going to ask the person for their problem, just say, give me a quick 60 second overview of your problem. Because this guy chunked at least 10 or 12 minutes out of our presentation. And so at the end, we, had to, we were pressurized to finish. So make sure if you have a large group of people that you say, I just want 60 seconds overview and thank you. And then you get to the next one. Otherwise, they'll give you a problem at the end of their, their problems. Mm. You've got no more place to, to share your solution. Exactly. Yeah, so I think going forward... Um, we need to now to, I think at the end, we're going to give homework anyway. Yeah. To get... The, Always. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> learn and grow. Yeah, yeah, learn and grow. Because I think it's, it's, it's important for, for us to get feedback from someone who's watching this video. To say, this is what I'm selling, right? And these are my, these are my different clients. How can I develop a selling strategy that talks to all of them? I think the important pro process... Step one is you have to be aware... That if there's a financial guy in the room, he's not looking at the structure of the process and the content of your training. He wants to know money, numbers. What's it going to cost me? How many people? 
cost per person, what kind of return on our investment, I'm going to put in X amount of money, how much am I getting out? But he's the financial guy. Yeah. But the tra that transformation lady, what do you think was important for her? Because she's got a different mindset, different expectation, different need from the accounting guy. Exactly. What, what, what was important for her was transformation beyond compliance. Because you see this PE thing that is, that is going on, so many companies are doing it just as a uh, check. Tick box. Tick box activity and stuff to say we're complying and stuff. But she's looking for something that is more than just compliance, you know. So when we, we had to speak to her at that level to assure her that what we're proposing is actually transformation beyond compliance. Sure. We're not just wanting them to put in money into the program. We're wanting, to, wanting them to put money and we're, what, we're, what we're guaranteeing them is impact. That you put in the money, we're going to make the impact that you're looking for. But as we're talking right now, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I think I should introduce the viewer to, to the four Ds. The four Ds, which actually makes it easy to remember. That's what you used yesterday. Exactly. Share it with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you, need to, you, you need to use the four Ds that will help you understand the, the buyer's decision-making process. Or the buyer's and, and, and seller's process. So the first D is, 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 is obviously a, a, a discover, right? You need, to, you need to discover who the client is. You need to, this includes prospecting, this includes cold calling, it includes physical visits and getting in touch with the, with, with, with the client. The second thing you, that you do, which is the second D, is, is diagnosis. This is now you're being a uh, plain doctor. When you come to me and say, I'm sick or I've got a headache, I must first put you into some diagnosis process where I'm trying to understand exactly what you may have eaten, all these kind of things. So it's the same thing as, uh, as, as, a, as a client. You don't just get there and offer them solutions. You first, them ask, you first ask them questions. Mm. Where are the challenges? Where, where, where have you gone wrong? What, what, what do you think is the problem? All these kind of things. And the third D is design. And the design part, you don't design solutions alone by yourself because otherwise you're going to design the wrong thing. You want to include the client in the process. Yes. So this includes questions. This includes sending them questionnaires, doing, doing a, a little bit of surveys, doing a little bit of tests, whatever the case might be. So you want them to be part of the process. You don't want to design something and just go and, and, and throw it to them to say, this is the solution. But if they are part of the process, then they will, they, will, they, will, they will appreciate it and they will even learn more being a part of the process. They will, they, they will learn more of what they need to sure. be doing in their businesses. And the last D is deliver. You now deliver the solution. So this is now that, where... The sale is made. Now we're getting the... The sale is the made. Delivery. The sale is made. The sale is made. Then now you are going to, you are, you are, you are going to deliver because you cannot get to the diagnosis and, 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 and the design if the sale has not been made. Because once you get to the design stage, it means now you are in agreement that there's a problem that we need to be solving. Because remember, that's what selling is all about. Selling is not forcing people to get into things. Selling is making you understand that you've got a, a certain problem and I'm saying to you that I can help you solve the problem. So before we went to them, we did check to see what their problems were. Exactly. What would you, what would you say is their overarching main problem? The numbers. And I think that's how any business discovers that they have a problem. Their sales are down by 10, 20, 30 percent. Exactly. The numbers were down. And the numbers for me is a symptom, not a cause. It's a consequence of something versus a res it's, it's a result of people, teams, leadership, culture. Yes. I think for the first, the basic salespeople that are getting out into the market and typically seeing people, number one, remember whether it's a man or a woman, uh, the racial differences, the positional differences, they all come with a different mindset, a different set of values, different expectations. As a fundamental processor, customize what you are presenting to them that it speaks to their interest and passion. Mm. But I want to share something else that takes it to the next level of complexity, which is where you've been doing well, is people have a different kind of mindset. And if you watch us and you watch other people, when we're thinking about something, so if I ask you the question, what did you do last Saturday? So you have to, I have to think about it. Tell me, what did you do last Saturday? I went out. Okay, so you, you go looking there. So your eyes are going to go and find the information. Because you're what we call a visual-oriented person. It's your dominant oh, okay. mode. Okay, yeah. 
So we have visual, audio, and kinesthetic. So visual pictures up left. Normally, most pictures are up left, like you did. You looked up there for your for your your past memory, and you look up right for future. If they're audit, auditory, they look left for for ears, horizontal, or right for past. And if they're speaking to themselves, very often they'll look down, or they'll they'll kind of focus away from you, and you can see them running a movie. If they go down to the right, that's they're looking at emotion. And that's where most people are at. But you need to basically calibrate and see, is this person calibrated normally or do they swap around? Because I'm left-handed, so sometimes left-handed are different. And there are some people that have what we call a look-to-talk rule, that when, when you look at them, they'll actually look at you and they'll hold your look, so their eyes don't move around. Mm. But become aware of, because I was, I, was, I was looking, I thought, Shh, up there for my memory, I thought, okay. So it it's can be quite a complex process of who am I in front of, What's their value system? How are they going to make the buying decision? And we'll talk about buying decisions later. And are they, do you see what I mean? Does that sound good for you? It I get doesn't what feel right for me. Okay, I, 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 I get what you're saying, but I can sense that someone who's, who's watching this right now, they're asking themselves, but what does that got to do with anything? Like, so... It's about communication. Why is, why is that important, that, that, what you're saying right now? I'll give you an example. Okay, I, had a, sure. a, a, I had a friend... Her and her daughter were fighting. They had a miscommunication. Mm-hmm. So I said to her daughter, how do you know your mother loves you? She says, she touches me. She does this. And it was all physical processes. She gives me hugs. So I said to the mom, how do you show Reese that you love her? She says, I tell her things. And I say things. And I say it like this. So Sharice needed touch. She was a kinesthetic. That's how she understood the communication. Her mom was an, an auditory, so she was telling her things. And so their the, the whole communication process is once talking a language here, visual, once talking kinesthetic, and they didn't match. So there's a barrier. It's, 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 it's like t- talking Japanese and Greek. I get what you're saying. So are you saying to me that for someone or for me or for whoever to be a, a, a sales superstar, for someone to be a high performing salesperson, yeah, they, they need to master their communication skills? fundamentally communication is the process by which you understand connect communicate and then create the cell okay. if I try and sell you something you don't understand what I'm trying to give to you I'm saying do you see the picture and you say no I, I, I don't get it doesn't feel right for me because I'm talking at a visual level you are talking at a kinesthetic level so for kinesthetic I would give you my, my leaflet and say have a look at this so mm, that you mm. can feel it and you can hold it and you can check it. Mm, mm. For a visually oriented person dominant I'd say can you get a picture, can you imagine, do you see, can you see. For the audio guy I'd say how does that sound for you. Okay, I so it's say. very advanced stuff but we'll, we'll cover that in more detail as we go. Okay so let's say my communication skills are bad, are terrible. How can you help me or how can you help anyone who's saying you know what. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with, with, with my communication skills. Is there a program you can put them into or is there a way in which you can help someone? Well, our coaching process and your, your superstar sales coaching process is the perfect process for that. Okay. It's a perfect solution because it starts with awareness. And most people are unaware. I'm occasionally unaware that I stutter and stammer because I haven't prepared properly maybe. Or like you, if, it's, if English isn't your standard common language and you're trying to explain something, I notice quite often people will th- uh, they'll rethink and rethink and rethink and then they'll speak. So having a coach that can reflect for you and make you aware is step one. Number one is awareness. Step two is that they can help you to learn and practice and drill and rehearse the right way. Because people say, say practice makes perfect, but it doesn't. Perfect practice makes perfect. Because you can practice bad habits. For me, okay. sometimes I don't well, listen long enough and I speak nice. over the client. Yeah. And I have to, even with you when we, we spoke about last week, I have to try and hold my enthusiasm down and, and let them finish. Yes. What is your greatest learning from yesterday's process? You need to be prepared. Mm-hmm. You, you, you need to be prepared. You need to know who you're talking to. And you need to know what you want from them. Because sometimes you get an opportunity to sit in front of people, but you don't know what you want from them. So if you sit with me or if you sit with anyone, always be clear of what you want from them. Right? Or you must also know what you're offering to them. Because it's not necessarily about you all the time. You're going there to sell a service. It's, it's, going, it's you going there to solve a problem. Yes. So you need to do, a, do research on wherever you're going to see as much as you can. It's easy because the internet makes things easy. So you can even read about someone you're going to meet online if they've got a website in terms of what their business is doing, how they're doing it, and all these kind of things. So when you get there, 
you show that you prepared. It's even impressive to talk to them on what's ex exactly happening in their organization. So I think the, 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 the biggest two things for me is you need to be prepared and you need, you need to know what you're offering to your clients. I think for me, the, the real valuable thing is you bring the sales skills and the superstar training. But a superstar doesn't live in an island. They live in a context with other people, other teams, leadership and culture. And so that's the value that we bring is we bring a holistic solution to the process that we improve and optimize and create sales superstars by this young man's books and coaching. And then from my side, we bring the culture change, the leadership optimization, the sales management, the teamwork, the trust building. And together that creates an incredibly holistic process. And we've seen companies 2x and even up to 4x their business with the processes that we've done. So if you're looking to improve your performance, if you're needing sales tools, if you're looking for your book, we'll put up a picture of your book for the people. Give us a shout, give us a call, check us out on the web. We'd love to help you 10x your potential. Yeah, exactly. Final words for, for the viewers? Final words is homework. <laughs> what's the homework you want to do today? This without, we cannot do this without homework. So what's the homework so you So the homework give? is, I want someone who's watching this right now to, to drop me an email on the on, on i think yeah i'll put the email on the bottom the email at the bottom just just drop me an email tell say to me i've got this type of clients and this is what i'm selling i'm trying to find the best way to sell to them and draft something to say client is doing this this is how i'm gonna sell this client is doing this this is how i'm gonna sell and i'm gonna re, i'm gonna review it uh, for you for free I won't charge you for that. I'm just going to help you well, refine then. your pitch and understand how to approach your clients. That's very kind of you. Yeah. Can I give them some homework? Give them homework. Come okay. on. <laughs> the homework is to ask the person, what did you do last Saturday or last week and see where their eyes go. Watch, become aware of their eyes. Ask them what they're planning to do or where they're going on holiday in December and watch where their eyes go. Or you can ask them to say, what's your registration number? And they'll have to go and find a picture for it typically. But become conscious, become aware, and that'll help you become a sales superstar. Okay. All right. Thank yes. you very much. We'll see you on the wild side. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.